This conference will now be recorded. This conference will now be recorded. Okay. So, I just want to give introduction about myself. So, my name is Ram. I'm from eClasses. eClasses.com. And uh, so, I have around 10 years of experience. And in this 10 years of experience, I've been working for the SQL Server, MSBA, and Power Bay. I also have experience on Azure Data Engineering and I have uh, five years of trainings and uh, freelancing experience on about technologies, SQL Server and MSBA Power. All right, so what is an Azure Data Engineering? The main agenda of this demo session is understanding about Azure Data Engineering. So what is a data engineer will do? And that data engineer, what exactly is going to do inside the Azure and what is Azure? So these are all the things we are going to understand today. What is Azure? What is a data engineer role? What is a data engineer role? And what are the services learning? What are the services learning under Azure Data Engineering course? And what are the prerequisites for learning? Azure Data Engineering. Okay, how is the job market for this course? All these things we are going to discuss. So before we are going to understand about what is Azure, we have to understand what is a cloud computing and what is a on-premises system. And what is a public, private, hybrid cloud? And uh, what is ES, PS, CS? All these things we need to understand. And what are the cloud providers in market? So if you are understanding about all these things, then definitely you will get an idea about the Azure Data Engineering course. All right. So what is the on-premises system? Let's say for example, you are going to start a in second place. So we are going to start a small organization. This is a kind of a six months of the project I want to do. In the six months of the project, what I'm going to do, there are five to six developers in my organization. We are the team of the six developers working for a project. It's a kind of a small startup idea. We are trying to implement some software with this all six people and definitely we require a kind of infrastructure to work to sit somewhere and to work and to develop this project so as a part of this project six months duration we are going to specify over here so six months of the duration project So in this six months of the duration, what are all the things we need to set up to develop the project is, the very first thing is infrastructure. Okay. So once the infrastructure is developed, 
then you need to set a platform once the platform is set up then you need to set up a soft base the infrastructure includes like cpu ram hard disk cpu ram hard disk and your networking networking all these things will come under the infrastructure so once you have all these things then you need to set up the platform the platform is nothing but like the operating system security and uh, like a kind of a sql server i need a sql server over here then coming to the softwares if anything you required you can purchase the softwares sql server oracle these are the softwares those are on the platforms to develop something what do you mean by software software means already someone developed and you are just using you are not going to do any kind of development on top of that one so a sql server as developed by microsoft we are trying to do something on that we are trying to develop something on that sql server so that is not a software here that will cover under the platform for example office 365 or the gmail right or skype gmail or outlook are we going to develop anything on top of the gmail and look no we are just using this service so these are called softwares here the operating systems you are installing your computer and sql server you are installing on your computer those are not softwares those are covering under as a platforms you are setting some platform on top of that platform you are going to develop something about your project got it so these are all the setup you need to keep in your premises a premises means where you are going to see and set up your infrastructure platform softwares networking security all the operating system and all the softwares so you need a building first and you need a power that's a common thing for everyone after that whatever the infrastructure platform softwares you are going to purchase over here everything you need you have to set up in your premises right okay let's say for example i am going to purchase hard disk size 1000 gb because it's a 6 months project we thought 1000 gb is enough for our project to store but then after 6 months after 3 uh, months after 3 months we realized 1000 gb is not enough we need 500 more gb we need 500 more gb that means in your laptops or in your server in place of 1000 gb you need to put 1500 gb 1500 gb you have to put so just imagine when you are going to increase this hard disk size sometimes your systems configuration may not be support to increase the hard disk size and you just imagine over here to replace your 1000 gb hard disk with 500 more gb 1500 gb there should be some process for example if you are working for a big organizations to change your system configuration there are many factors applicable one your uh, system configuration needs to be support okay and uh, you need lot of approvals and uh, the procurement team needs to purchase hard disk and 
configuration team need to set up on your mission. Got it? So these many steps you need to follow to increase your system capacity. Generally, this will take one week to 10 days process. In organizations, it is taking one week to 10 days definitely to change your increase in the hard disk size. That is the one factor. Lot of time waste process here. And another scenario. I have purchased a SQL Server license. The license of the SQL Server is for example, uh, $1,000. So $1,000 of you are going to pay for the SQL Server license. But I'm just using the SQL Server only six months. Only six months. After six months, what you are going to do over it? Are you going to sell the SQL Server license in the second hand? No. So after six months, I don't want to use the SQL Server license. So unnecessarily you are paying thousand dollars for the SQL Server license just for six months. Okay, just for six months, unnecessarily you are paying thousand dollars. It's a waste of money. And also you require initial capital investment. What is initial capital investment? To set up all these things, you have to pay initially. When you are going to purchase CPU, yes, you have to pay. When you are going to set up RAM, RAM hard disk, networking, operating system, security, for every license you need to pay the whole amount, total amount, before you are going to start this project. So there are three drawbacks identifying over here. One is there is a lot of time consuming process. And the second thing is unnecessarily you are paying just for sequence purpose, you are paying the license for amount and initial capital investment you have to pay. So we are just starting a startup company. I don't have that much of money to invest initially. And second thing, I don't want to wait because the client is not giving that much time to set up all these things. And just for six months purpose, I don't want to put invest this much of amount here. And also maintenance of these things is very difficult. We have to spend a lot of money for the maintenance. So to overcome all these issues, what are the issues initial? capital investment and uh, I just want to use only how I'm going to use the service I'm using just six months right so I just want to pay for the six months only. if someone is giving a SQL server license just for six so definitely if it is a six month then the price will be reduced so I just want, I'm just looking at a kind of service, pay how much you used. If you are using six months of the SQL Server, then pay for that one. And uh, speed of system configurations. And less maintenance no maintenance cost and the speed of development so if you don't have all these over headaches zero maintenance cost and uh, speed of the system configuration then definitely you can focus more on the development so if you don't have the capital investment then you cannot set up all this thing right 
so how to overcome all these four issues whatever we are identifying when we are setting a on premises system in your local machine in your local on premises if you are set all this infrastructure it's a small software company these are all the problems will be arised over here to overcome all this we have a cloud environment instead of on premises there is a cloud environment is coming to the picture that is nothing but cloud computing so how a cloud computing is going to overcome all these four issues five issues so the first one is initial capital investment initial capital investment you no need to pay anything when you are going to use the services in the cloud computing okay what is a cloud computing a cloud computing means so generally what we are doing in our organization you are setting up all this infrastructure platform and softwares so for example this is my organization this is my organization in this organization you have to set up of systems and cpus and uh, hard disk ram platform operating systems on each machine and you have to make sure the networking between each computer and this is about on premises system This is about on premises system. Now, this is a cloud computing. So, what is the meaning of cloud computing? Let's say, for example, the SQL Server, whatever you are installing in your local computer by purchasing the license, and whatever the hard disk you are purchasing and keeping in your machines, instead of keeping your hard disk space over here. And SQL Server. Simply, we are going to use the services provided by other computers. So, trying to access the services available in a third-party computer that is called cloud computing. Accessing the services provided by other third-party computer through internet browser. So, by using a Google Chrome or the Internet Explorer, we are trying to browse the services. Let's say, for example, storage account I require. Or the services are required. Services are required. It is in mute. Services are required. A SQL Server. For example, a SQL Server is installed and maintained by someone. This is SQL Server. This is a storage. Nothing but uh, whatever it is, uh, hard disk. Okay. So these two things will be managed by someone, and you are just trying to browse by using the Internet Explorer through Internet Browser. So the storage means and the SQL Server will be managed by some other servers and computers managed in the data center. The data center is managed by Microsoft, for example, whoever the cloud provider. So that is going to manage it through a. So you are just trying to access storage accounts or the SQL Server, whatever from your local computer. So how this is going to happen here? So generally, there is a backend data centers. With a lot of servers having all these services, and through the internet browser, we are trying to access this one. A simple example for this one is you know, Google Drive. Google Drive is also a kind of a cloud storage, it's a kind of a cloud computing. What you are do doing in the Google Drive, 
you are trying to upload all your photos audios videos images anything from your local computer to google drive how you are uploading and how you are connected to the google drive through the internet browser so you are going to the google chrome and you are just typing a url www.googledrive.com so once you are connecting to the google drive.com they are giving 15 gb of the space free for you then you can upload 15 gb of the space 15 gb of the storage images audios videos files anything into the google drive what that means where exactly that files what you are uploading into the google drive is going to store the data it is going to store in the google drive somewhere a physical data center with a lot of storage a memory cpu ram contains in the back end and managed by the google you understand so data center means a lot of i will show you how the data center are looks so there is a lot of racks servers with hard disk cpu ramps organized by the cloud provider google drive is a cloud computing managed by google micro data centers so how the data centers looks so you can see the images see these are all the data centers just imagine a lot of servers available over here in the back end uh, simply instead of maintaining a server and capacity in your on system someone is managing in the back end we are going to access through the internet explorer or internet browser that is called cloud computing you don't need to install any sql server sql server has already installed on a server managed by microsoft then through the internet we are just trying to connect to that particular service and try to utilize that service and you just pay how much time you are using that service and you are going to store a lot of images 15 gb is free if you want more than 15 gb how much you want i need 10 gb more yes you just pay only for 10 gb and use that storage all right so cloud computing is accessing the services provided by a third party computer through internet browser so what is the advantage if you want to utilize the services like this the advantage is one advantage you no need to pay anything initially there would be only our monthly billing information available for example if you are going to store 10 GB or 100 GB of the data in the cloud, then every month you need to pay. And monthly billing will happen. How much storage you are using, you have to pay for that particular storage amount for that particular month. Okay. And the second thing is so you don't need to pay anything initial capital investment. So this is how we are overcoming the issue of initial capital investment. No need of anything initially to pay. And the second thing is pay how much you use. If you are using 100 GB, just pay only for 100 GB. Just pay 100 GB. But in our on premises case, what will happen? You are purchasing at a time 1500 GB of the space. Are you going to use 1500 GB of space in a single day? No. Day by day, day by day, day by day, your data will be uploaded 
and it will reach sometime 1500 GP. But unnecessarily, you, you already paid some amount for 1500 GB space or this you purchased already, but you are not utilizing fully. Then there is a waste of money, right? So, but in the cloud, when you are going to purchase the 100 GB of the space, how much space you are using, you have to pay only for that one. So, pay how much you used and what are all the services you used, how long you have used, then you can pay only that amount. That is nothing but a pay as you go means what are all the services you are using inside the cloud computing only you have to pay for that services and for that particular time how much time you have used you just try to pay the amount for the particular services so this is the advantage after six months you don't require sql server then you no need to pay after six months only till six months how long you are using that service and also for example when i am developing this project the sql server i required only in afternoon hours then you just pay only for afternoon hours how much time you are using and in the in the night hours non business hours i don't require sql server you no need to pay but in on premises initially you are paying already 1 lakh rupees of the license and you are purchasing and you are installing how much time you are using in in a day for the sql server so this is how we can see speed of system configuration for example initially i am using 100 gb later i realized i need 1000 more gb how much time it will take to purchase the thousands of the space inside the Google Drive or in any other cloud? Seconds. Within seconds, you can increase your memory size or any services. If you want a SQL server, within seconds, you can your service in the cloud environment. You can purchase the service immediately, you can use. And the maintenance of this services will be taken care by the cloud provider whoever is giving the services to you he will take care of the maintenance but in the on premises what will happen you are the owner you have to take care of your servers and all those things no maintenance cost in azure cloud sorry in cloud environment and instead of focusing on all this maintenance and all those things Simply, you can not create a development. Anyone can sit anywhere and they can start the development of the projects. Am I right? Because it's a cloud. If you have an internet, then simply you can go to the internet and you can able to browse the things. So, do we need to sit in a single place or in the same place, or do we need to go to the office? Not required. Simply you can go to the go to your system, open the internet browser, just go to the particular URL. You can upload the photos to Google Drive from Hyderabad information. And same Google Drive, someone can upload the files from other places as well. So that is the advantage of the cloud environment, cloud computing. So by using this cloud computing, we are able to overcome this issue. So that, that is the reason so many organizations, instead of setting all these things in on-premises systems, they are preferring to go to the cloud computing. A simple example here. Let's say for example, you want to eat a biryani. What do you will do? Definitely will go to the restaurant. You will go to the restaurant and you will order the whichever the biryani you like and you will eat. And at the ending, you are paying the amount of what is the biryani you have taken and how much time you are spending over there. 
So based on that, the bill will be generated and you will pay and you will come out. Correct. That is called cloud computing. Means you need a particular software or the services. You will go over there, purchase, utilize, develop something, and then pay for that one and just come out. Other case I want to eat a biryani. Are we going to construct a restaurant to eat biryani? No, right. It's a foolishness. Just for eating a biryani, just eating a biryani, definitely it is a foolishness to construct the restaurant. The same thing here. You want to develop something by using SQL Server or whatever, a small project, just for that, why you are going to set up this much of infrastructure and platform and software in your on premises systems? Not required. Simply go to the cloud, use the whatever you want, and pay for that and leave it. That's all. Okay. All right. So, what about the providers? Example here. The major companies, the major organizations, whoever is providing this cloud computing, we are calling it as a cloud providers. Who are all the cloud providers in the market? The popular one is Azure, Microsoft. The second one is Google Cloud, Google. The next one is AWS. We are calling all these three organizations as a cloud providers because they are going to they are going to sell a software through online. You can do a simple comparison of the Amazon Flipkart. What they are doing? They are going to sell their products through online you are going to purchase a refrigerator that means a refrigerator is already placed somewhere in their gudam when you are placing the order immediately that will be delivered to your home here also these cloud providers are going to start a business of selling of the software online What are the softwares they are going to sell? They are going to sell the services we are categorizing to three categories. We are categorizing the three services. What are those? ES, PS, CS. ES means infrastructure as a service all platform related platform as a service cs software as a service when you are going to the supermarket they are organizing all their Groceries, vegetables, cosmetics, and uh, anything else. They are, they are organizing in their store, right? And they are categorizing. Similarly, these cloud providers also, they are serving their services into three different platforms, three different categories. All infrastructure related like uh, CPU, RAM, networking, all these kind of things covering under the infra service. And all the platform related like operating system, SQL Server, Oracle, or whatever it is coming under PS. All software related. The best example for software is Office 365 from the Microsoft. 
if you log into www.office365.com lot of softwares already available outlook skype excel word then many things are available already developed one so this is how they are categorizing the services and organizing the services what they are providing through the their portals so everyone have their own portals for example more supermarket more supermarket more is a brand name managed by tata heritage supermarket heritage is a brand managed by future group of companies reliance fresh is a brand name managed by reliance group of companies similarly the microsoft also starting their selling of the softwares in the cloud by using brand name azure aws also amazon amazon started their brand with the aws amazon web services google also gc google cloud provider so they are starting selling of the software softwares and whatever by categorizing to infrastructure related platform related software related by using a brand azure and uh, through their portal www.amazon.com www.flipkart.com similarly www.azure.com so through this url you can log into azure portal and purchase whatever the services you want and you can start the development so all these three microsoft amazon google all these three providers we are calling it as a public cloud providers what do you mean by public and private public cloud providers means anyone can go and purchase the services from this cloud providers if you have a credit card yes you can go to the www.azure.com you can purchase any kind of software you want you can go to the more supermarket reliance supermarket heritage supermarket you can go and you can purchase any product similarly this aws azure gcp also you can able to purchase any kind of products that is the reason we are calling these are the public cloud providers what do you mean by private some supermarkets only available for the customers from a particular gated community or army having their own canteens only the army people can able to purchase the uh, purchase the products from their canteens right so similarly some organizations what they will do instead of purchasing the services from the public cloud in their organization in their organization they will maintain their own cloud center they will maintain their own cloud center here they will maintain their own cloud center and in that cloud environment they are going to maintain the services so from their organization the people can be purchasing all the services if anyone need a sql at this person need sql and this person need sql and this person need sql and this person need hard disk so this is called a private cloud means this is related to with this particular organization private cloud so only the people from let's say for example this is for tcs data consultancy or for the any reliance so reliance is maintaining their cloud service and the people will use the cloud environment instead of setting up a sql server in everyone's mission they are making like a cloud 
in one particular server. So the maintenance of this cloud computing environment and the data center maintenance will be taken care by third party organization. Okay. But the cloud computing, whoever the cloud provider we have, they will take care of that. One second, guys. Okay, so this is how a private cloud can be managed with their own organization and this is a public cloud Anyone can able to access this one and purchase the services Public cloud So sometimes organizations what they will do When they are going to implement a project some services whichever they are feeling is less cost they will take from the public cloud some services they are going to keep in their private cloud due to some uh, data security or the cost effective point of view this is from private cloud some services from the public cloud that is nothing but hybrid cloud you can implement a project by accessing the services from the private cloud as well public cloud that is nothing but hybrid cloud okay so finally we have identified we are trying to use a cloud provider microsoft azure to implement my process so when we are going to learn this microsoft to implement your project inside the microsoft azure you should know what exactly the things available what are all the services required for your project what are the things you need to learn so i'm categorizing this microsoft azure and the people are trying to four different kind of learnings and four different kind of jobs I'm going to carry over those four. For example, the people who are trying to learn Microsoft Azure, they are calling to me and they are telling I want to learn Azure. They don't know what they want to learn inside Azure because inside Azure there are a lot of things available. Learning of all things inside Azure is not possible. Okay, so learning of the things inside the Azure, the whole things is not possible. So that is the reason what we are categorizing over here. When you are trying to learn Microsoft Azure, there are four different kind of jobs available. One is Azure Data Engineering, Azure Developer, Azure Admin, Azure DevOps, Azure Data Engineer, Azure Developer. and uh, Azure Admin and Azure DevOps. So these are the four different kind of job rules available. If you want to become Azure Data Engineer, yes, go and learn related to the Azure Data Engineer. Azure Developer, Azure Admin. So what kind of background people will take care of? What exactly Azure Data? Azure developer will the people who are more interested about developing the apps basically the people who are having Java 
dot net background they will go to the azure developer and the people who are having more uh, interest about the administration side already previously having some uh, interest about the azure administration giving access security and all those things azure devops is something whatever the developers developing that they are going to manage and they are going to moving from one one environment to another environment managing of all these processes what exactly is your data engineering azure data engineer role is completely working a projects related to data like uh, managing the data loading extracting the data transforming the data loading the data and storing the data finally managing the data it's all about the data a data engineer what he will do he will take the data from the business and that data is going to make ready for the reporting so you can see the architecture of this one for example i have a city bank atm centers from the city bank atm centers every day there are a lot of transactions will happen the transactions data will come over here the back end each database every transaction will happen that will be saved and recorded somewhere in our sql server databases that sql server is available inside the cloud environment inside the azure cloud i have this sql then what i want to do all the transactions data from us uk australia i'm going to take the data processing somewhere into one centralized location and i'm making the data ready over here and finally that data is going to present in the overview so as the azure data engineer is going to take taken care of collecting the data and managing and processing of data to perform this azure data engineering there are very limited services available inside the cloud only those services we are going to cover in this time so what are those services in high level we are going to cover over here is the first one is storage accounts we are going to cover the storage accounts and the second one is azure sql server azure sql server the next one is azure SQL Synapse Data Warehouse. The next one is Azure Analysis Services and uh, Azure Data Factory. This is very, very important. And Azure Data Lake and Azure Data Bricks and Azure Cosmos DB. The highest priority in this course is Azure Data Factory. This is the ETL tool. Like your SSIS, Informatica, or Data Stage, what you have in our ARM is right? This is the highest priority we are going to give over here. These are all the major services we are going to cover in this training. And the duration of this course is, it will take 40 to 50 hours of the duration to complete this course. The prerequisites to learn this course is, a basic, SQL programming, SQL queries. So you should have a knowledge about the basic SQL queries, then you are eligible for learning this one. So what are all the things we are going to provide in this training is Azure, sorry, SQL Server complete SQL plus TSQL SQL plus 
TLCL videos we are providing free of cost and then then this Azure data engineering classes will be held on live online Azure data engineering classes will be live online 40 to 50 hours duration after completing this course we can able to do a certification agent 200 sorry dp 200 and 201 certifications okay so what i am recommending over here you are learning the tools or the services related to Azure data engineering then why power bi combination after you are making the data ready power bi developer is going to design the reports by taking the data whatever the Azure data engineer is making ready so if you also have experience on power bi also then you are getting a lot of opportunities of course Azure data engineering also very very good market currently many clients many projects are migrating to the cloud environment and the msba whatever you have course is replacing with azure data engineering so if you are learning azure data engineering plus power bi you will get a lot of opportunities so after completing this course you can able to perform like a four to five years experience person okay so I hope you have already got the course content. If anybody not pinging on my WhatsApp number, so guys, please ping me on WhatsApp. Then you will get when the session is going to start and uh, all the updates, the course content and recorded videos of the classes, everything. So please ping me your email address on my WhatsApp number. If anybody not pinging in the, in this demo session. Any questions from anyone now? Hi, this is Sunil. At the last point, sorry, last point you said uh, uh, the uh, Power BI. So you said pa uh, Power BI, it's a replacement for data engine. I think that point I missed out. I uh, you know somehow. No, 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 no. Data engineering is a replacement for MSBA. Okay, okay. So okay, MSBA I heard wrongly. By yeah. How many days will Power BI take to complete? Power BI will take 30 to 35 days. Oh. So we are offering both the courses Power okay. BI plus mm -hmm. Azure Data Engineering. We are offering two separate courses as mm -hmm. well. A combination of these two courses also available. Uh, what would be the combination of two courses? So, so every, anything related to the price, you can just reach out me on WhatsApp. Okay, okay, thank you. So one one of the question, which which would be the first to take, Power BI or Data Engineering Azure? There is no dependency. So we are planning mostly continuing parallel let's say for example if people are enrolling for both courses mm -hmm. then our sessions will be happen one hour for power bi another one hour for azure data engineering okay so let's say for example some people know i i don't i cannot continue both parallelly so you can take azure data engineering first and then after completion is if you want to go to the power bi yes you can go First, I want to take Power BI, then I will go to the Azure Data Engineering. Yes, you can. Power BI, we are going to start from tomorrow, 8.30 a.m. IST. So, Azure Data Engineering timings and I will let you know. Okay. Hi, sir. Hi, sir. How much uh, the level of pro programming language we need? Means core or advanced? To understand this, yes, it is enough. Just learn a cool. No need to 
go through python so. yeah i will tell you we are going to teach that in our uh, course right you don't need to okay. learn separately okay okay so, And sir, is there oh, any material provision after every class? So every day, the recording class, recording of the class will be provided. And uh, okay. the second thing is the class notes. What I'm typing over here. So material we are preparing, books okay. that will take some time. So once that is ready, then we can take what is the form. Okay. But as of now, I will share these recorded videos and this one. Whatever okay, I'm typing. Sir. Over. Okay, sir. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone? Guys, I think uh, some of the people still not yeah. that. Uh, I, I have, you know, a uh, couple of mm -hmm. questions. So Power BI 